Keeps it low, a deflection, and it's in. Ishmael to Jury Shradi, his second of the game. Two inside the area. Morris! Well, it was left by Bruin, and Morris does the rest. Espinosa on his right foot. It's the MLS Weekend Preview presented by AT&T 5G. We have so much soccer in store for you this weekend, and Kaylin Carr and I are going to get you all set up, aren't we, buddy? It's a terabyte of skill in a nanosecond. <laughs> I'm still looking at it. I have no idea what that means, but I love it anyway. Uh, Darwin Quintero, he's, uh, he's been hot for the Dynamo. I couldn't resist. I'm oh, sorry. God, that was amazing. Atlanta United taking on the Red Bulls. Um, Atlanta struggling to score goals against teams not named D.C. United. Yeah, I did it. I went there. Oh, come and, on, uh, I know. I know. I'm sorry. That was mean. That was mean. All right. Well, the Galaxy, speaking of mean, have not been uh, good at the bottom of the table. And uh, they're going against the Rapids, who haven't played a game in a long time. September 23rd, I believe, because of COVID-19. So got to watch this one. We'll see. Oh, yikes. All right. The Vancouver Whitecaps taking on RSL Whitecaps, riding a four-game losing streak. Uh, their last win, though, was against... RSL, they are only one point off of a playoff spot, Kalen. Mm, look at Yankee Stadium. It looks beautiful. Oh, and uh, yeah, NYCFC have been on a three game winning streak. The Revs uh, go in the other direction. Haven't scored in two games. Buxa, he's going to want that one back. He sure is. All right, this one's always fun. LAFC taking on Seattle. LAFC, though, missing Brian Rodriguez and Diego Rossi to international duty. And Seattle, three straight wins for them. They are rolling per usual. Well, time is up for Ben Olsen um, in D.C. Um, respect to the legend. Uh, maybe D.C. will be looking for the bounce. And the fire on the other side have been pretty good. Two, one, and one in their last four matches. Cincinnati taking on Toronto. Six games unbeaten for Toronto. They are currently sitting on top of the Eastern Conference standings. And then Cincy, uh, three straight losses without scoring a goal. Yeah. Mm. And speaking of absences, Pedro Galese is going to be gone. In steps Brian Rowe. Orlando, uh, they've only lost two in their last ten, and Columbus has not won in their last three. Philadelphia Union taking on Montreal Impact. The Union only one loss in their last seven games, which is pretty, pretty good. Montreal got their first pretty win, good. though, in six matches, their last one. Pretty you know, good. is pretty, pretty good is uh, Timelia at penalty stops. And yeah. uh, Nashville has had trouble scoring. They, they have been tough. So I think it's going to be a low score in this one. All right, Dallas taking on Minnesota. Dallas, only two goals scored in their last four matches, and Minnesota also struggling to find the back of the net. Only three goals in their last four games. And we finish off the weekend with hopefully, likely, some madness because that's what happens when San Jose plays. Uh, the Quakes are streaking, though. Three-game winning streak in Portland is scoring goals in bunches. Scoring goal. So here's a look at the Western Conference standings. Kalen, what stands out to you here, buddy? Well, I'm always going to have my eye on the Houston Dynamo. Um, if they get a win against Inter Miami, can they jump above that line? And then at the top, it's all about the Pacific Northwest, which is fitting for the show because we have a legend you will find shortly coming in. Oh, boy. Uh, Seattle Sounders legend and Pacific Northwest as well, represented with Portland Timbers um, in the second spot. That was a great tease, by the way. Um, yeah. All right, here's a, here's a look at the Eastern Conference standings. I am looking at the top four teams and the top bottom, or the bottom teams above the playoff line because Toronto, Philly, Columbus, and Orlando all within four points of each other. And then when you look at that playoff line, we've got Nashville, Atlanta, Miami could make it, Chicago. It's going to be a slugfest as we head into the end of this regular season, and I am so here for it. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome on in to the MLS Weekend Preview presented by AT&T 5G. Susanna Collins alongside uh, a beanie sporting Kalen Carr. Is it really? It's beanie weather? Is that where we're at right it's now? A little, it's a little chilly. Come on. Ugh. It's a little chilly here. I'm not ready. And, uh, I'm not ready for this. I don't know if this. you noticed the playoff beard coming in a little bit. <laughs> you have to look closely, Suze. I don't know if you can see it yet. I, 
I did. I did notice that. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but you're the one that brought okay. it up. So not okay. a fan. Not, okay. Not, All right. not All my right. favorite look, as we have established right. already. But that's 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 <laughs> for another show. Um, that's fair. Okay. That's so fair. we. We t- we, one place you're not going to need that beanie, Miami. And I want to talk a little bit about Miami because right now we saw in the standings, they're currently in 12th, but there are only four points off that playoff line. And we saw in their last game, Gonzalo Iguain with the gorgeous free kick, another goal from Matias Pellegrini. Um, I mean, is this, do you think Miami can make the playoffs? Kalen, is it starting to kind of come together? Can they make a little push to get above that line? They got a chance. They got a chance. I mean, when you have 10 teams in the East making the uh, playoffs, I I mean, D.C. is probably a a tall task, but I I think for most teams, they're kind of right there. Um, They've lost two out of the last three since he's arrived, so it hasn't just been completely smooth sailing, but it's gone the way I expected, actually, where they've been in some tight matches throughout the season, and when you have the quality like this, that's how you can turn a point into three. And that's what we saw from Iguain. So I think they'll need to be able to uh, get on the right end of a couple of those. They have a big match this weekend with the Dynamo, who will be desperate as well, right below the playoff line. But I think if you're looking ahead, as we do in weekend preview shows, to next week, and they play Montreal and Atlanta on Wednesday and Saturday. When you look later in the schedule, Orlando and Toronto later in the year, I think next week will be a big week for Inter-Miami. If they can get um, a good result against Montreal and Atlanta, those are six-pointers um, on the other side, they will be put themselves at least with a puncher's chance. Hi, Brad here. I play professional soccer for a living. I enjoy cooking, spending time with family and friends. I won't lie, I've broken some hearts in my day. (laughs) Maybe it's because I'm goal-oriented. Get it? Goal? When I see something I want, I go right for it. I'm from Arizona, land of the sun. My nickname is B-Rad, from Malibu's (laughs) Most Wanted. Oh, Wow. Oh, that was amazing. Uh, Time now for AT&T call to the field. And um, B-Rad, B-Rad Evans is joining us. He is a, uh, this was, I, they kind of surprised us with this tee up video. And I have to say this just absolutely made my day. Uh, Brad, thank you so much for for joining us. I don't know. Were you now he's Now he's off the market. I mean. Everyone just cruel. had to make that before they signed a contract with the Sounders. I don't know some <laughs> weird thing. That <laughs> wow. But honestly, our, I think our my facial hair 15 years ago was where Kalen's <laughs> is right now. That's a yeah. very maybe, good point. Yeah, that might be. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, you've been growing that. You got to start somewhere. Yep. Ago. The swoop. So to- you had the little Bieber swoop going too. Mm-hmm. That was nice. It was very boy band Before Bieber. It was that. That was 2011, I am told. So this, I think, this okay. was before before the real emergence of of said Justin Bieber. Uh, Brad, Please. thank you so much for for coming on. Always great to see you. Um, there are in a, in times of uncertainty like we are living in right now. You know, we know like death and taxes are certain, but also the Seattle Sounders uh, being contenders. It's just like one of those things that just seems to be consistent in our lives and I'm grateful for it at at this point but they're they're playing so well right now they're sitting on top of the Western Conference standings um are they going to win the Supporters Shield this year Brad it there is a chance uh this team will miss a a number of international players as they go uh through October and and into November so it's going to be a tall task um and a lot of that weight is going to lie on Jordan's Jordan's shoulders right now uh, Raul is, is, has been a ridiculous signing for the Sounders. He's been lights out. Um, but Jordan has been, you know, that piece. And, and we'll get into Jordan a little bit later. But uh, and, and obviously you look at Nico. Uh, he kind of makes this team tick. But everything will fall on Jordan's shoulders. There's no reason to think that this team can't win the Supporters' Shield. And, and it's something that we've talked about on the podcast with uh, Steve and I. And we've had players on all year. And, and it's in the back of their mind. Um, you know, Schmetz will always be talking, hey, let's let's pump the brakes on Supporters Shield. But the reality is, is there's maybe Toronto's playing better, uh, Philly, but in terms of all around quality, I'll take the Sounders to, to win the Supporters Shield. You got LAFC this week. Um, why, why have the Sounders been so successful against LAFC? Mm. 
That's a great question. And, and like I said, Steve and I dive into this topic all the time. And, and for some reason, since last year's playoff match, that was kind of the switch that said, hey, uh, we're going to take hold of this little rivalry and battle that we've got going. And they did that. And it's honestly, it started with uh, Ariaga and really putting Vela in his back pocket in that playoff game. To me, it looked like, you know, Chad Marshall and I were talking, hey, Ariaga could have got sent off two, three, four times over in that game and got away with it. So physicality has been, um, you know, kind of a trademark when you're playing against LAFC because once they get going and they get space and they start running at you, it's hard to recover. So the hard tackles, um, they, they, they figured them out, and, and this year especially. But in saying that, the Sounders haven't played in L.A. yet, and that will be this weekend. That will be a different task. But also LAFC now, they're going to miss Brian Rodriguez, Rossi, uh, some, some key players. Um, but when you play away from home, anything can happen. Uh, but the Sounders have got their number this year, and, and I'm here for it. Brad, I want to ask you about Brian Schmetzer, uh, 400 games in charge of the Seattle Sounders team. And this is a coach that I think is uh, supremely underrated, despite all the success that, that uh, Seattle has had. I'm, I feel like Brian Schmetzer just doesn't get enough credit for, for being the man in charge. And I want to ask you how you have seen him evolve as a coach uh, during his reign in Seattle. Yeah, look, I think I think you're right. He doesn't get the credit that he deserves because of a few things. He's not a, you know, top American soccer player who came up through the ranks and played in MLS and, you know, played for the national team. He didn't play overseas at all. Uh, you know, he's a guy who played indoor soccer and played for the Seattle Sounders. And so his maybe ba soccer background isn't what we're used to or what, most fans want to see in this league. You're not taking a guy who's coached the Mexican national team or the Argent Argentine national team. Um, so he just doesn't fit maybe that soccer mold of what is traditional. Um, but he's been able to be so successful. And he gets respect from other coaches around the league. Maybe not from pundits and uh, you know fans, but with other coaches, you cannot deny the success. Um, and, to, and to be able to coach 400 games for, for one team is, you know, that's obviously, if you could have a level above Mount Rushmore, you know, he sits up there. Um, he's the overseer of the of the Sounders Mount Rushmore. So, um, you know, in saying that, he's, he, I've never seen a person with this club who actually, like, loves it more than he does. And that says, you know, a tremendous amount. And, and he means a lot to the fans. Uh, the fans mean a lot to him. And uh, he'll continue to, if this team's successful, there's no reason why he can't be here another five or six years. Yeah, the, the original homegrown player. I think he signed straight up out of high school himself. Uh, <laughs> pretty pretty incredible old, yeah. stuff. Yeah, amazing. Wild. Um, when we look at this season, it's been a strange one, but as we look towards the MVP um, trophy that's going to be given out eventually, I mean, there's uh, Pozuelo is high up on the list for me, and there's been a lot of names, but I, I know one that um, – you're looking at, which is Jordan Morris. And it's been a while since we've seen an American even close, really, to the conversation of MVP. I do think Jordan um, should be in that conversation and potentially to win it. Yeah, I think it's a no-brainer. Look, I think um, anytime we interview somebody before a Sounders game, the first player they mention before Nico, before Raul, is Jordan. Um, the teams, that's the first check mark on the scouting list. And you weren't seeing that two or three years ago with Jordan. He was still a player. You know, for, Well, first he had an ACL. Yeah. And then he comes back and he was lights out. But now he's, he's taken his game to the next level. And there isn't a better player and a, and a more dangerous player right now to me in Major League Soccer. Um, and with everyone saying that, he has still found a way to produce on the field. If you had said that four or five years ago, we hyped Jordan up. We said, hey, this guy's coming out of college. At that time, he was training with us with the national team in 2014 at Stanford. And everyone was saying, oh, he's the next thing and he's going to be amazing. And at that time, he couldn't handle that pressure. Um, he was performing and, and starting week in, week out, but he was kind of teetering there a little bit. Which way was he going to go? He decided not to go to Europe, stuck with the Sounders, but now he's at a place where we can talk about him week in, week out, and he's going to go out and take on his defender. He's going to um, you know, provide assists, provide goals, maybe not have the best game, but that's a sign of an MVP is when you're not playing well and you're still scoring in games and assisting, that can take you to the next level. And like you said, Pozuelo is, is high on the list for sure. Um, but when you combine assists and goals and the way that this team is playing right now, um, 
he still has to continue throughout the rest of this year to prove himself, and he knows that. Um, Pozuelo right now is kind of coming into his own, and he might take it to the next level. And Jordan is going to have to follow that suit if he wants to be talked about as, as MVP this year. Do you think he'll eventually go to Europe? Is that something that's yeah, we asked him? him? We, yeah, we asked him about that on the podcast, and I think it would have to be the perfect situation for him. You know, he's, he's comfortable here in Seattle. And, uh, you know, anytime you have the contract that Jordan's making right now, um, you're comfortable. You've got a house. You've got the, you know, you've got the soon-to-be wife. You've got the dog. And you're on a winning team that just doesn't lose and you make the playoffs every year. I think any other time, if the team wasn't doing well, he might look for an out. But right now, I think he's going to ride that wave of being the Sounders, uh, you know, potential MVP. And he'll be on the Mount Rushmore if he stays. And he's already a club legend. Um, but I, I think it'd have to be the perfect situation. Um, maybe if he wins the MVP two or three times and shows, oh, this is too easy. Maybe I say, yeah, I, I, I go overseas. But there's still some challenges and <laughs> things that he wants to, uh, you know, prove himself in Major League Soccer. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Uh, Brad, one final question before we let you go. Tell us why the Seattle Sounders will repeat as MLS Cup champions this year. Yeah, uh, defensively, number one. I, you know, I talked about it uh, through MLS's back tournament. Is the defense was uh, a little bit shaky at times, and, and we had asked questions about will this defense be able to push this team to the next level? Over the past month, they've done that, but I think that you'll see another Toronto MLS Cup matchup. Um, this seems to be how the past, you know, four or five years has gone. These these two teams battling it out you see the superstars um you see the history between the two they all know how to win in the playoffs um and i think that it will uh repeat itself um but th there's no reason once these guys get healthy with the addition of ramon torres uh, torres and uh, brad smith um you're starting to build that depth that you need to get to the next level that the sounders had last year to make it to mls cup um you're adding that now to to this roster there's no reason to think that this team uh, can't and won't win MLS Cup again. Great stuff. Brad, always great to see you. Thank you so much. Well, those are scenes from CenturyLink Field, as you can see. And that is actually going to be staged as a voting center for the 2020 election. And Major League Soccer and the BPC and the MLSPA have launched MLS Unites to Vote, a league-wide nonpartisan initiative to help players, staff, and fans register to vote. Check out MLSsoccer.com slash vote to learn more about how the league is looking to educate our community on the voting process, drive voter registration, and and more. Hamid comes out. Oh, wow. Adam Bosa scores. And New England has two goals and three points. And for Gallagher once more. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. Atlanta United tearing DC apart on their own turf. Ah, oh, the end of an era in D.C. as on Thursday, D.C. United announced that they were parting ways with head coach Ben Olsen. Check this stat out. This is crazy. 71.1% of D.C. United's and MLS matches were played with Ben Olsen as either a player or a coach, which is just staggering. He is such a, a, a part. He is ingrained in the fabric of that city and that club. And, Kaylin, it's really, it's really kind of hard to wrap my head around him not being there. Yes, yeah, Suzanne, he said end of an era. I'm not sure there was much of an era before or, or <laughs> since. I mean, he, he's been that foundational to the club. I mean, of course, that those early couple years, but then ever since he arrived into the team and winning championships. And look, at, at this point this season, it hasn't gone their way, whether it's through injuries or even some of the signings and moves that haven't quite panned mm -hmm. out. They found themselves at the bottom of the table with 11 points. I guess the question has to be asked as far as the move and the decision to make it now. Was it time to move on? Um, and do you think it was the right time um, as opposed to waiting towards the end of the season or seeing if things could turn around? Mm, um, yeah, I think it was. I think it was. I mean, it, it, it's been a miserable season for D.C. They've only won two games. And you mentioned all of the, the injuries and, you know, defensively, they're kind of a mess. And, and sometimes when a team is struggling, you just need to inject 
a little life into them. And I think, you know, oftentimes that is uh, getting a new a new head coach. And I think I think that Ben Olson ultimately agrees with with this decision. We actually spoke to him back on June 23rd um, of this year, uh, right before the MLS's back tournament started on the call up. Jillian Sakovitz and I had him on and I asked him hypothetically at the time, I said, you know, have you ever thought about life after D.C.? Have you ever thought about leaving? And he said, look, I could be fired tomorrow. I could be fired tomorrow. And he and he said, I've been given some mulligans in my career in terms of seasons that, that didn't go so well for him. And he said, this could this could happen tomorrow. Um, he said, but it, either way, it's always going to end well for me in D.C. He said he, he would feel so much peace about it because he is literally given everything um, to this club. So, I, you know, it's sad. It's it's strange. It's going to be a, a weird new time for D.C., but um, I think I think it was necessary. I think it was the right move. And he's always going to be ingrained into the fabric of that club and that city. Um, I remember I had we talked to, to Bill Hamid at one point and tried to call him Mr. D.C., and Bill Hamid was like, no, 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 no. Mr. DC is Ben Olsen, um, and I think that's not going to change. I, I, and from what I understand, he is going to remain with the club in in some capacity. Um, so I, you know, you, you can't say enough about what he means to that club and the city. But I do think that that it was time. And Kaylin, I want to ask you. I mean, you you've played against him. Um, you know, he's he's been around and. And you've experienced it with him. You've interviewed him for for the movement from your from your perspective. And you think about the times that you've had with him. What do you think his legacy is going to be? Not only with DC, but for for Major League Soccer. Yeah, it's, it's a strong one. And I think when you talk about Mr. DC or some of the ways that pe- the affection that people feel towards him, it, it's partly because of the. Um, the unselfishness, where I, I think it's really, for him, about the club <laughs> um, and that first. And I think it's been that way. If you look at him as a player, that's the way he played, where he, you know, is about the team, a, a, an unselfish guy. I mean, when he came into MLS, he was this, you know, really dynamic winger and could run at guys and, and get he scored really important goals, MLS Cup MVP, lifted trophies. And then kind of later on in his career, moved into more of a deep lying position and was really the heart and soul of some really good DC teams that I um, was lucky enough to battle against. And then got to play against him as a manager or as when he was a manager. And, and uh, you always knew that every single time you played against one of those DC teams, whether it was one of their good years or one of their bad years, that you were going to be up for a fight. And I think that was because of the personality that he showed. I think tactically he ended up really growing a lot as a manager and you saw the way he was even able to manage big personalities and when he had really top players the way he was able to really mold them into some of the better um, seasons that they've had with Lucio Acosta and Wayne Rooney Mm -hmm. Um, and even in some of the poor seasons they were able to come away with something Um, I I know he mentioned mulligans but I I think he earned some of them as well with um, winning the Open Cup and and being able to keep sort of the legacy of that club on top um, in a lot of ways so yeah maybe it was time um, right now I think things clearly were the writing was on the wall but um, a player that I think and, and a person and a manager that in MLS, his legacy, I think, extends far beyond D.C. to Major League Soccer. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I think it's a good time to, to salute Ben Olsen and, and all he's done. Yeah, wish him all the best. Rui Diaz is going to fall back to him. He'll let fly from this and he scores! Raul Rui Diaz completely against the run of play. Out of Polito. Polito makes it 2-0 for the second time tonight. It's Busio to Polito. What a save that is from Galese. Pedro wow. Galese needs to take a bow. That is truly outstanding from the Peruvian. Diego Rossi. Yeah. Well, some clubs are about to be a little shorthanded as several players getting called up for international duty, Kalen, and uh, for LAFC. Jose Cifuentes, Brian Rodriguez, Diego Rossi on the Galaxy side, Jonathan Dos Santos and Rolf Felcher, Red Bulls, Christian Caceres Jr., Kaku, Orlando, Pedro Galese, and Yaxan Mendez. And then for SKC, Alan Pulido getting the call up for El Tri. Uh, Kaylin, this begs the question, um, you know, with, with some of these teams uh, being a, a little bit 
shorthanded and and missing um, in some cases is a significant amount of games because of the condensed schedule that we're experiencing in 2020. Do you think these are our international break stances? Do you think that despite having lost uh, some important players, LAFC will still be able to host a playoff game? What do you think? Well, first of all, let's say uh, I think we can add Palacios to that list too. So it's actually longer of a list mm-hmm. for LAFC to be missing. And and in some ways, when I look at the international break and the way this season has shaken up, yes, I understand condensed schedule and unprecedented year, but it's tough because in a lot of ways these teams are victims of their own success and their own ambition to be able to sign young, talented players that are being called up by their national teams. Um, So you feel for LAFC in that way, and then when you add in sort of the extra quarantine of 10 days, that starts to look tough. And you could also say their home form has been much better than their away form. Mm -hmm. I believe 1-4-0 away, 5-2-3 at home. So you could even question... Could they actually go into a slide and maybe miss the playoffs? I don't think that's going to happen. And I actually don't even think it matters that much whether they get a home match for the playoffs because, look, they lost two home matches in the playoffs in the past two playoff years. And this year, when you look at the way the playoffs are going to take shape, there's going to be, you're not going to have to go play against the Wonder Wall. You're not going to have to go against Emerald City supporters. You're not going to have to play likely Mm -hmm. against uh, Timber's Army. And it's just going to be, Get on a plane, go up there, do the business, and get it done. And when you look at the idea that they will get these players back towards the end of the year, they'll also add Carlos Vela, a certain somebody at some point, which I I think, yes, the system has been fantastic, but I think sometimes we've almost forgot. Like, one player will make that big of a difference in that. And then also a bit of good news. It looks like today there's a report coming out of LAFC that they are in for a 26-year-old center back, which will also be of help. So I don't think it'll much matter whether they get a home game in the playoffs or not. Nah, doesn't matter. I like it. All right. Um, Orlando. Orlando. Uh, What about Orlando? I have... Well, I've got a question for you about Susanna, about Orlando, Susanna. Okay. I'm going to turn the okay. tables. Can Brian Rowe hold it down? Because international window, Galese is gone. Can Brian Rowe continue this uh, good run of form for Orlando City for them to host a game in the playoffs? Um, um, yeah, I'm going to say yeah. I think he, he did well um, in, uh, against, you know, against other teams. I think that he... Um, I think that he's perfectly capable, and, and I say that because I think that this Orlando team is uh, the real deal. You know, they're 10 games unbeaten. Um, there's a huge amount of depth on this team. I, I, defensively is one of the areas I think that we've seen them improve so much from, from seasons past. And then, you know, offensively, they've got um, a ton of weapons and the emergence of Daryl DK and Chris Mueller and, you know, Nani being Nani. I, I, yes, I, I think that they're, okay. I think that they're going to be just fine. That's All my, right. that's, I like it. And, that's uh, my take. I like it. I got another one for you uh, on Sporting Kansas City, another player that will be um, missing players with Alan Polito going. Um, mm-hmm. Can Sporting Kansas City score 10 goals with Polito gone? 10 goals is a lot. 10 goals is a lot of goals. Um, so I don't think they're going to score 10, but I think that uh, I think that they're going to be OK. I think Johnny Russell is going to be just fine. He has six goals on the season, by the way, and Alan Polito only has five. So um that he's perfectly capable of picking up some slack. Gotti Kinda, Kyrie Shelton, uh, they can they can find the back of the net as well. But yeah, I think ten goals is uh, ambitious. Okay. This will probably be uh, pulled immediately and replayed <laughs> next week at my own expense. But I'm going with the Galaxy <clears throat> against Colorado. I am going with Portland over San Jose. Toronto versus Philly. And I'm going Philadelphia. I am picking NYCFC over Miami. I'm here for is to, uh, All right. is to uh, embarrass myself and, and uh, do the impossible, which is to get these picks right. Wow, Kaylin's favorite segment, MLS Predict 6, presented by BetMGM, a weekly free-to-play game from Major League Soccer. Correctly predict the final outcomes of the six featured MLS matches along with secondary predictions such as which player a team will score first or how many total goals will be scored and you could win 50000 bucks. Head on over to MLSPredict6.com and play 
for free. Caitlin, it's been a rough go. I don't know what to say. You were 0-2 last week. TFC took down Philadelphia, and then you picked Seattle to score early against Vancouver, but Shao Paulo didn't open the score until the 46th minute. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. Sometimes it's just not your week. This is ridiculous. Philly was <laughs> up with Justin Morrow goes down, then so Josie close. goes down, second half, and I'm like, all right, we got this. And then... It all falls yeah. apart. So. Anyway, but it's a new week, and then, which means a new uh, opportunity for me to make another wrong pick. <laughs> uh-huh, and in that uh-huh. case, uh, who am I going to go with? NYCFC. <laughs> First New England. Yeah, I'm okay. going with NYCFC in this one because, all right. look, they've won three in a row. And they've been scoring goals and playing very well, whereas New England hasn't scored in their last two games. All logic is pointing towards NYCFC. Come on, Sean Johnson and the boys. Let's get it done. Let's got? go. All right. Uh, my pick this week, I'm looking at that Orlando-Columbus matchup, and I think this is going to be a draw, which I know is kind of boring, but I think that these are two teams that are evenly matched. Orlando, like I said earlier, riding that 10-game unbeaten streak. Uh, Columbus have kind of fallen off a little bit recently. Two losses and a draw in their last three games, but I just think that this is a matchup between two teams that – are really, really fighting for that top spot in the East. And uh, I think it's going to be even at the end of 90 minutes. That's all right. All right. Well, the secondary yes, pick yes. is where we secondary separate pick. <laughs> who's really a genius here. And okay. look, I haven't gotten the first ones right. The second ones have been tough. But I'm just going to go even deeper and go with one of the hardest picks you can, which is the first minute score range. Oh, I'm going yeah, between tough. 56 and 65. I'm just feeling maybe... You know, 0-0 zero, zero at halftime, not a lot of goals. And then okay. all of a sudden in the 56th minute, Fafa Pico. No, I, I have no idea. But I got to make a pick, <laughs> and that's what I'm going with. So why not? All right. Oh, good. I give you credit for taking that this one. That's, impossible. That's, that's hard. It's impossible. It's really, really hard. No. Um, okay, I'm, so for my secondary, my sec. Thank you. I am actually um, two for two last week. Thank you. Uh, my secondary pick this week, I'm looking at that Atlanta Red Bulls matchup, and I'm going for total goals in this one. And I am going with Uno, one goal. Three of the last four games between these two teams have ended 1 0. So uh, I'm just looking at history to guide me on this one. One goal in that. That is my secondary pick. Have you learned nothing? History it. means nothing in 2020, Susanna. Expect the unexpected. It's true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at uh, this weekend schedule. Like I said, we've got a bunch of matches coming up on Saturday. Check it out. We've got that Inner Miami Houston matchup at 5 p.m. Eastern. You can watch on Univision, 2DNA, Twitter, and the Zone, Kalen. Mm hmm. I'll be monitoring the Sunday? NYCFC game to see if those guys come through for me on Sunday. But then uh-huh. if you've got Brad Evans, Steve Zakawani, Chris Costigan on a, on a broadcast, you got to watch LAFC and Seattle, right? That That's the headline for oh. me on Sunday. Hello. That game at 7 p.m. Eastern uh, on ESPN. And, uh, guys, we, we round it out with a bunch of games that are on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, it's a full slate, a whole weekend full yeah. of soccer, which – I'm very I was just made aware that I to. called him Chris Costigan as opposed to Keith. Shout out to Keith. Sorry about that. Keith Costigan, <laughs> you're a ledge. You're a ledge. <laughs> oh, it's geez. been a long week. This week has felt this like a live, year, right? to be perfectly honest. Yeah. It is live. Um, oh, guys, thank you so much for for. Thanks to Brad in. Evans for joining us. Thank you, Brad Evans. That was so much fun. And, yeah, enjoy the weekend, everybody. Enjoy the soccer. We'll see you next time. <laughs> wow. 